you have spoken so much on the show about, you know, particularly your dad, because, you know, you tell these fabulous stories and it's like your dad inhabits you, you know, mm. and, and you're clearly so proud of that and love it so much now. Were you always like that as a kid? Because I suppose you must have been quite different within your community. Strangely, it's weird, because I grew up in South London and I was. I had no problem with being half Arabic, where you would think, I think maybe now children nowadays might feel a bit worried about that and what people would think. And, and maybe people did then, but I was just oblivious. I was just so proud of my dad. I said, oh, my dad's Arabic and, you know, we eat whole lamb and you've got to come round to my house. And, and my parents would hold these amazing parties. We just lived in a in a very modest um you know uh semi uh but they would transform the house because my dad was an actor and they would transform the house every so often into like an arabian tent they would just they just got silks from the market mm. and they would t turn it into a tent and we'd have these amazing parties and i, I just thought we were just i just thought we were really cool <laughs> but I mean, I probably. But, but I mean, I remember when we used to invite friends over, and they'd say things like, um, "I say, well, you know, do you want to come for a sleepover?" And they'd say things like, "Will your dad make us eat sheep's eyeballs?" Because that's all anybody <laughs> thought. Arabic. I went, "Yeah, <laughs> breakfast." And then I'd say that to my dad, and my dad, I'd say, "Dad, you know, let's really wind up." He'd go, "So, you have come for sheep's eyeballs?" <laughs> 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 With or without garlic. <laughs> and, go, and then he'd take great joy in just giving them a bottle of Rice Krispies in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but did you but you were different though? Did you did you know you were different because you had mixed race parents? Yeah, but I, I did, but I was just really proud of it. Yeah. I was just really proud. And maybe that was because my dad was. So it was never mm. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was just wasn't a problem for me. Mm. I mean, the problem for me was that my dad was an actor and he would often be out of work, as actors are, and so he'd answer the door in his dressing gown and I used to pretend he was the lodger because I was so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> You're very much about family. I've, I've picked that up from you. What's yeah. it like with your sisters, your sibling relationship? Well, me and my sisters were really, really... Well, me and my eldest sister, Dina, were very, very close growing up. It was just two years between us. And, I mean, we, had, we made up our own language. We were the Salas. We used to call ourselves Salas and go, Hello, Sala. How are you, Sala? Oh, I'm OK, Sala. We spent ages sitting on the bottom step in our house pretending we were on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Just like doing this. And then we would speak in this, uh, this gobbledygook language then that nobody else could understand us. My sisters were three, as my dad always says, formidable women. Yeah. That's all he wanted. He wanted to come to this country he came to this country with 50 quid in his pocket, literally, and he came here because he wanted to have six daughters that could be free. Aww. That's what he wanted, because his sister was married at 14, was married off at 14. He said, I want strong, independent, professional women that, do, that follow their dreams. And what he got was three really independent, <laughs> <laughs> like very, Aww. very, very difficult. Very difficult women, and, yeah. and because of that, we have a very intense on and off relationship. Yeah. And did you always want to be a, an actor? No, I always wanted to be a nurse because I used to love, like, if somebody was sick, I would run and catch it in my hands. And so I was like, I'm a natural. I like, I'm not seeing anyone else doing this. And, like, if somebody was unwell, it was my favourite thing. To, I used to get cloths right when I was tiny and I loved bringing people's temperature down. So I was absolutely going to be a nurse. And all the family were, like, a bit uncomfortable with it, but nobody said. And then um, I was in secondary school and I did a play and my mum was... I'm great friends with my mum now, but my mum was a very strict mum and not effusive and never gave any compliments. The biggest compliment she could give you was like, oh, well, I think there'll be plenty... I think there'll be plenty of other people not looking great, so you probably look OK. That would be a compliment <laughs> from my mum. So, anyway, I did this play and I was playing a man and I had a drawn-on moustache and I didn't realise I was funny. Anyway, so, you know, when you're a kid and you're rehearsing, anyway, did this play, got huge laughs, came off stage... And my mum was standing in the hall with this look on her face I'd never seen before, and she just went, you were really funny, you were really good. And that second, I was like, I'm going to be an actress. It was literally that so second. It's got nothing to do with the fact that your dad was an actor or anything like that. Were well, you no, inspired I, by him? Or? Well, no, actually. It's funny, because I used to... Every summer, my dad would do a movie and we would go away with him and on location... Not, not like a star, he's what we call a job in actor. And we would go to all these amazing places and everyone always say, are you going to be an actor just like your dad? And you know how much you hate that when you're a child? So I'd go, no, no, I'm not going to be an So I made a point, I'm not going to be an actress, I'm going to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. And it was very glamorous, I mean... It was amazing going on these sets. And I remember at nine years old, my dad, this big movie with Sean Connery, and I had to... I, and I was absolutely convinced I was going to marry him. 
I was absolutely <laughs> convinced. So you know, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, a, it was an unusual. But you did childhood. go to stage school. I did because after my mum gave me this face, which then made me want to be an actress, like I've got to leave my school. I've got to leave my school. I'm going to go to Italia Conti because I'd seen fame. So I thought, what's <laughs> my fame? <laughs> so I went to and so I made this decision that I was going to go. So I went really early in the morning when mum and dad, I knew they would just be waking up, and I went in. And I said, I've, something's happened, and I've got to go to stage school. And they were like, right, okay. So this private, private, very academic school. And I said, and if I don't go, I'm going to throw myself out of that window there. <laughs> and my mum said, God, this is telling us something. Um, so they agreed to me to do the for me to do the audition. And they told me afterwards, we agreed because we knew you wouldn't get in. Oh. We knew you didn't have a hope because hundreds and hundreds of kids would audition for this yeah. school. And, and I got in. Amazingly, God knows how, because I sang Oh Bloody, Oh Blada, you know that song? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. But I forgot the words, so I sang <laughs> Oh Bloody, Oh Blada for a whole minute. <laughs> <laughs> so with all that drama, is that how you found your way into EastEnders? Um, well, I was, I was what you call, again, a jobbing actress. I used to just do these tours and I'd be in the back of a bus and I'd do all this work for no money because I just loved being in the theatre and I just wanted to be in it. And it was an amazing time. But I was really, really broke when I got EastEnders, properly broke. Like, I would walk along the street, kicking the rubbish around, looking for a ten pence so I could buy... And I would just buy wow. potatoes. Well, don't feel too sorry for me, I love potatoes. <laughs> and I would just eat <laughs> potatoes. And um, one day I just <laughs> called up my agent. I said, listen, something's got to happen. I've got to do something like a soap. And he went, well, yeah, that's what everyone wants to do. I was like, oh, right, right. I said, oh, something like EastEnders. Now, these things don't happen, no. you know. And he said, um, well, you know, it's pie in the sky. Yeah, if something comes up for EastEnders, I'll send you for an audition. And how bizarre, I got an audition the next week. Just oh. by sheer fluke, they were looking for somebody, I suppose, a bit like me. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I would have thought that with all your dad's contacts that he would have been able to open doors for you, but it doesn't work like that. It, it doesn't really work like that because he was... Yeah, I mean, I was in that vibe. And I suppose with theatre, he helped me in. But to get into something like a soap, you know... Yeah. And I went for the audition, and it, this was like... For me, it felt like life or death. Mm. And then that, they sent, brought me back for a callback, and I had to... I remember I had to do... had to learn a piece, and I had to be in Pat Butcher's sitting room. Mm. And I imagined it was going to be enormous, but it's tiny. Mm. And I had to do this whole really dramatic acting piece to Pat Butcher's empty chair. Mm. <laughs> I was very lonely the whole time that I was in there, but I was... I got incredible fame. All I'd ever wanted to be was rich and famous, and within weeks I realised that's not a thing. But was it a kind of overnight change in your life? Oh, I mean, they sat me down, they said, what we have to do is we have to put your hair back like this and you have to stay like that for six months, no matter what scene you do, because we have to do everything in close-up and the audience has to know every single part of your face as if they were, you were their family. That's what they used to say to all the soap all the wow. new actors. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, my dad was an actor. Julia was very famous at the time and absolutely fabulous. I don't know what fame is like, but it's nothing, nothing like EastEnders fame. That was just, at that time, it was crazy.